Alrighty, what is going on you guys? So today is Friday. Yeah, so so to take uh, the day off of work, uh, which is kind of nice, you know, everybody needs a break from work now and again. But what's awesome is that it is, uh, since I took uh, today off, I literally get the entire weekend, but uh, with work and everything that's been going on like crazy, um, they gave us actually the actual entire uh, weekend off. Actually, I have to excuse the bag uh, noise there. Um, ran uh, into uh, Goodwill beforehand and found just a couple things, but it is Friday, and well, it is the Friday before the eclipse. Yes. Uh, yeah, now not a lot of states will uh, see this, but uh, I'm hoping to upload uh, some uh, footage from the eclipse at some point. Uh, probably, obviously, probably be after, but um, uh, yeah, hopefully it'll work. Uh, I don't really know. Uh, we'll have to see what actually happens. Uh, they say to actually put, uh, if you're recording the uh, eclipse or whatever with your phone, to use uh, one of the uh, glasses, like in the uh, solar glasses to put in front of the camera lens. And luckily, I have several pairs extra because uh, this weekend going to uh, visit uh, family and hang out with them for the weekend. And well, since like I said, it is the eclipse, and uh, Oklahoma Law is a diehard, uh, old school sci-fi fan, so he loves all those those good old, you know, like '60s and '70s sci-fi stuff, including uh, other great stuff, including uh, MST3K or uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000, for those of you who don't know the know that. So I figured, well, since it is Friday and I'm already out and about doing a little bit of uh, shopping before the uh, complete and absolute craziness mayhem that is the eclipse, because where I'm at, uh, we're expecting probably at least anywhere from about 300,000 to about... 500,000 extra people coming in by Monday and around the area just to watch this eclipse. So, yeah. So, I figured why not swing by our local disc replay? Yeah, and see what um, sci fi related stuff we have there. Um, you know, looking for some older stuff. Like, for example, I do have um, like uh, the Omega Man and, uh, you know, some of the older stuff genre of movies like that, like Soylent Green and whatnot, which is, uh, that movie itself is actually hard to find. The only way I found it was actually in a, uh, one of those, uh, sci-fi multi-packs that you would find at Walmart or whatever, uh, way back in the day. Thank God I still hold, held on to it. Um, but yeah, uh, so we will be heading towards our disc replay here and see what they got as far as sci-fi related stuff goes. Who knows? Could be some TV shows. Could be some movies. Um, hoping to find some older stuff on Blu-ray. Because uh, you just don't know what, um, you know, that they're going to have, in, you know, available uh, on Blu-ray. Because uh, sometimes people just bring stuff in. You just don't know. But, uh, so we're about ready to approach the parking lot here. Park in my absolute favorite spot. Way back here in the back. Because, well, it's easy to get out of. Yeah. Okay, well, catch you in a bit. All right, guys, so after being there for about, oh, about an hour or so, uh, managed to actually find some stuff. Uh, found a few sci-fi things. Um, you know, found, uh, I think, let's see here. I don't think I found any Blu-rays, because uh, most of the Blu-rays I was looking at, I've already got, apparently. So, uh, but I did manage to find uh, some cool older school uh, stuff. Movies that I've not really ever really seen in there before. But uh, let's see what else. I found a, a PS4 game that will we'll go over everything here uh, later on in the video. But uh, I'm going to go visit this local uh, thrift store that uh, apparently they got in a ton of uh, DVDs and whatnot. And so, and I know I've visited them before they're owned by a couple and they are uh, basically their DVDs unless they are marked differently all their DVDs are a dollar so let's go there and see what we can find because you just don't know once again see you in a bit
All right, good. We are back. So yeah, I decided to go out and about to do some uh, movie shopping. So we got a huge buttload of stuff to go through. So yeah, we got mostly DVDs, one Blu-ray, a um, couple of books, and um, so yeah, nothing too shabby. So let's get things going here. All right. So first off, uh, let's see here. We'll do the. Um, We'll do the Goodwill stuff first. So, not much there, uh, you know, as far as real, you know, as far as physical media goes. But uh, I did manage to find one book, um, although it's one that I know I don't have. But uh, I was kind of hoping to find um, one of, uh, <clears throat> kind of hoping to find the Terminal Man, but I can find it. But that's all right because uh, I like the uh, the bumpiness style of the of these covers. But from Michael Crichton, we have one of his better novels. We've got The Great Train Robbery. All right, as far as DVDs go. Uh, so with this movie, it just sounded wacky and weird. And I'm like, okay. And um, all I know is that it has it stars Ron Perlman and Rupert Grit from Harry Potter. Uh, we have Moonwalkers. Yeah, sounded interesting. So like, eh, why not give it a shot? All right, then up next, we have a couple of TV shows. Yeah, so, uh, now I've been trying to collect this series for a while, but, uh, you know, some seasons are harder to find than others. But, you know, what can I say? Um, you know, of course, I remember watching this show when it was on TV, you know, late at night, you know, you know you're not supposed to, but you're like, eh, what the heck, what can we say? It was Danny Elfman at his core with that most awesome intro theme, and, you know, that show, when it has the, uh, you know, that good old crazy, you know, the good old Crypt Keeper. Yeah, that's right. That's going to be a clue as to what it is. So, I managed to find uh, the complete third season of Tales from the Crypt. So, oh yeah, I mean, come on, this show is awesome. And uh, what can we say? It's just, you know, it's one of the best shows ever made. Probably will never get anything really like this ever again. Alrighty, and then finally for Goodwill, uh, I found this. Um, now, as you probably saw in a, uh, several updates ago, I managed to find um, the series of Knight Rider. Uh, all four seasons on Blu-ray. Unbeknownst to me, apparently they had remade it, or attempted to remake it, and I managed to find <laughs> a library copy of the revamped series, season one of Knight Rider. So, um, yeah, so we'll see how awful it is. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> so, alrighty, so up next, uh, let's see here. We will, we shall do the disc replay run. Yeah, because the moment, because the, the couple, uh, uh, thrift store, that one's gonna take a while because that's the most of everything. All right, so first up, uh, let's just get the blue. Uh, we have two, uh, one Blu-ray, one game, and the rest are, of course, DVD. All right, so first off, let's get the Blu-ray out of the way. Uh, so here we have the final edition to the DC, uh, you know, movie universe. Uh, so here we have Aquaman and... The Lost Kingdom, yeah, which I have not seen this one yet. I know people probably bash on it and how awful it is, but I'm like, well, you know, I enjoy the first one, considering that I never got to see this in theaters, and we waited so long for it, so I hope it's good. All right, so up next, I got, uh, uh, found a PS4 game that I don't have, and, um, I was like, the title doesn't, it sounds familiar, but I don't recognize the the story, but as it turns out, it's actually a, I think this actually might be the last game from this company, um, so here we have on the PS4, we have The Walking Dead, A New Frontier, uh, which is part of the Telltale series, and I don't think that they make games anymore, I think this might actually be the last one, I think, but yeah, we'll see, hopefully I can get a copy of Jurassic Park. I think I only need is Jurassic Park. And uh, I think the Game of Thrones game. I think I may have all of them, actually. So, f 
First off, we have ourselves a couple of music-related DVDs. Yeah, I've been trying to hunt these down for a while. Finally found them. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, it takes a while, but, uh, you know, what can I say? Um, it's kind of funny that this is actually a, uh, let's see here. This is a, uh, oh, <laughs> what do you know? It's actually a Region 2 edition, which I was completely unaware of. That's fine. Throw it on the PS4. We have the Region 2 edition of Led Zeppelin's The Song Remains the Same. Uh, now, I know there is a two-disc special edition out there. I would love to get that. But for right now, this will, uh, you know, be just fine. Because, well, what can I say? It's in the one of the original snapper cases. And you don't really see those anymore. And up next, this one I've been hunting for a while. Uh, you know, I love the album. Obviously, one of the best rock albums ever made, in my opinion. And uh, also kind of one of the rarest times where a movie is actually made based off of that entire album. Uh, so here we have Pink Floyd, The Wall, The Movie. Yeah, can't wait to sit down and actually watch this, finally. So, I also found some other goodies. Uh, some... Some kind of sci-fi-ish horror type stuff, because that's kind of what I was trying to find. And, well, I found one that just, the title sounded really, really terrible, and it come, and I didn't even really look at it. And it turns out it's actually a trauma movie. Yeah, of course, produced by Lloyd Kaufman. Uh, we have the 20th anniversary edition of Redneck Zombies. Yeah, which, and I'm like, okay. It actually sounds kind of interesting, but the one thing I didn't know about it, which is really cool, is that not only does it come with the DVD, but it actually also comes with the soundtrack there, which is actually kind of cool. That's something you don't see very often. So, like, why not? I think that's my first ever Troma DVD, I think. <laughs> uh, so, up next, we have a remake. Uh, now, I've heard of this remake. I heard it's fairly decent. You know, for what it is, um, you know, but what can I say? It's uh, directed, of course, by Chuck Russell, who's uh, done loads of great movies, including The Scorpion King. Um, and uh, I think it was Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Uh, we have the remake of The Blob. Yeah, I know I have the original uh, on Criterion, but I've never actually seen this, um, seen the remake. Or if I did see it, from what I can remember, um, I... I think the I think the one of the things that I vaguely remember is the blob going down a kitchen sink, and that's all I could really vaguely remember from this movie. At least I think it was this movie. I don't know. Anyways, so then up next I found a movie. I know it's gotten collector's editions out there, and I want to upgrade that, but this will suffice me for now. Uh, definitely a very early movie with very very early CGI. Uh, we have, from New Line, we've got The Lawnmower Man. Yeah, this is the original Snapper Case edition. Um, you know, like I said, you don't really find these hardly anymore. And, of course, it's always on our lovely Flipper Disc. Yep. Flipper Discs are awful. And this one here, um, I've only heard of the song. I've never seen the movie. Um... But the funny thing is, is that when it comes to this being an anniversary edition, the only thing that really grinds my gears, I guess, is if you want to quote Peter Griffin, that only has the theatrical trailer. I'm like, okay. But we have the 25th anniversary edition of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Yeah, I've never seen this. It looks, it looks cheesy, but it sounds awesome at the same time. I, of course, I do know the song, you know, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I know they made a, uh, what was it? I think they made a cartoon out of it back in the early 90s, I think. I don't know. Anyways. Um, so, yeah. So, now for the next big bag of stuff. Oh, yeah. We got a buttload of things to go through here. All right. So, first up, uh, well, the only book I found, um, the, the number kind of popped out at me, and then I spotted the author's name. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what's his name. And, well, what can we say? We have the novelization uh, written by Bob Gale, who, of course, did is known for doing, um, you know, the Back to the Future movies. Uh, we have the novelization of 
1941, which is Spielberg's um, war comedy film starring John Belushi. And, um, you know, never seen that one. And I'm like, cool. Have to read it sometime. All right. So first up, we got a small little pile right here. All right. So first up, uh, well, as I literally just said, <laughs> uh, go figure, right? I just bought this. Well, they had also there, they had the two disc set of both Lawnmower Man 1 and 2. So I'm like, okay, I might as well just go ahead and um, just grab it for both of them because, you know, I'm like, why not? Give it a shot and see. So there we go. All right, so up next we have a uh, an older an older movie uh, starring uh, Robert Stack, who, of course, he's known for doing loads of great stuff. Of course, he was in the original uh, Untouchables TV series. But for those of you who are about my age, if any of you remember that show, Rescue 911, he was the host of that show. Um, we also have George Sanders, uh, of course, uh, Edmund O'Brien and Dorothy Malone. We have The Last Voyage, which is sounds like a kind of a cool uh, disaster at sea type of movie. So I'm like, cool, have to check that one, check that one out. Then, uh, found, well, it did find me a sci-fi movie, which I've only heard about, but never seen. Um, stars Tommy Lee Jones, but in, uh, who else is in it? Um, oh, yeah, L Linda Hamilton. Um, of course, uh, this movie uh, is written, of course, by legendary director John Carpenter. We have Tommy Lee Jones in Black Moon Rising. Yeah, I've never seen it, so like, eh, why not give that a good old shot? All right, uh, now this movie, I, I don't know why I didn't see this. Um, I've heard awesome things about it and not actually seen it. I think I've only seen parts of it. Uh, but here we have from director Robert Zemeckis, we've got Jodie Foster and the special edition of Contact. Yeah, uh, the original Snapper case. This movie's really hard to find for some reason. It may be one of those movies that keeps getting harder and harder to find because it took, took me like... Five years to find that. I don't know why. I guess. I don't know. Alrighty. Uh, so then up next we have a, some random George Clooney movie. Very early on in his career. Which I've never even heard of before. Uh, when was this made? Looks like 2001. Maybe right after uh, he did uh, uh, Oh Brother maybe. Anyways. Uh, some sort of like heist uh, crime drama movie called uh, Red Surf. Never heard of it. Uh, then up next, we have a movie to add to my Sam Peckinpah collection, uh, which I have not shown off yet. Uh, well, because there's only like, like, what, maybe one movie or a couple? Uh, anyways, uh, he's known for doing really awesome westerns and other great movies. Um, but here we have a movie starring Randolph Scott, if you know the joke behind that from uh, Blazing Saddles, where they stand there and they salute to Randolph Scott. Um, anyways, uh, so here we have Sam Peck and Paws Ride the High Country. So we'll, you know, there's a little bit of Western flavor there. Mind you, all these movies that I'm showing you now were like a buck a piece. So I'm like, cool. All right, so up next we have a movie with Johnny Depp in it. And uh, it sounds like a really awesome uh, real-time thriller. Also co-starring Christopher Walk, and you know, uh, so here we have Nick of Time, and up next we have ourselves. Well, what can I say? I have to quote Angry Video Game Nerd uh, James Rolfe. We have ourselves what I think is probably sounds like a shitty shark movie. Yeah, no, it's not the Meg, uh, but what can we say? It's got Lou Diamond Phillips and Christy Swanson and Coolio. Of all people in it. Yeah. <laughs> we have some shark movie called Red Water. Okay. Give that a shot. All right. Uh, so up next, um, I think I finally have, I finally have found this one movie. And as of this recording, um, I think this actually makes my entire Spielberg collection finally complete. Yeah. That's like the only movie of his I don't think I've, 
I don't have. And, and it's actually only his second movie. Or maybe very early on in his career, obviously. Uh, but here we have Goldie Hawn in the Sugarland Express. And I'm definitely going to be watching this this weekend because uh, it just looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, that's so funny. Here it is. I look at the first time. You know, let's let's put a you know an advertisement for the same movie that's in here. <laughs> and uh, also, Duel. So there we go. His first two films. Um, you know. Uh, let's see. The funny thing is, is that it says it also marks the feature film debut of a young, now famous Steven Spielberg. Okay, so it sounds like this actually was his feature film debut, whereas Duel was technically technically Duel was his first movie, but you know that movie was made for TV. So, anyways, uh, so then up next, uh, well. Found ourselves found myself a sci-fi movie, which I'm surprised I didn't have, but I'm wondering if this is a kind of a remake a little bit. Maybe. Of course I remember when the trailer came out, you know, I'm like, cool, this looks kinda of interesting, but I never really got a chance to see it. Uh so here we have a very late film in his career, but um I think one of his more interesting movies from what I can remember. Uh here we have Val Kilmer in Red Planet. And I'm wondering if this is a, somewhat of a remake of uh, The Angry Red Planet. I don't know. I know uh, my uncle-in-law actually has The Angry Red Planet, so I might actually compare the two and see if there's any somewhat, you know, uh, you know, difference other than, you know, the title or whatever. All right, so up next we have a movie to add to my Schwarzenegger collection. Yeah. Surprisingly, I did not, I have not seen this one. I have no idea how I've not seen it. I kind of came across a video on YouTube, different clips or whatever, and I'm like, how have I not seen this? And um, the funny thing is, is that my, uh, my Blu-ray copy is on the way, and we'll do a, a package opening of that movie <clears throat> when it gets here. Um, so here we have Schwarzenegger in Raw Deal. Yeah. Um, I've not seen this. I'm going to definitely watch this this weekend because I'm going to have myself kind of a sci-fi action weekend. So, Alrighty, so then up next we have... What do we have? Ah, well, this is a movie I've never... I, I, I don't know if it's a comedy or if it's an action film or what, but, uh... Excuse me, it might be an action adventure film, but probably an action comedy. Um, you know, movie that I've never seen, um... Didn't even know that Michael J. Fox was in this movie. Yeah. Uh, so here we have Michael J. Fox and James Woods in The Hard Way. So I'm like, cool. I'll have to check that one out. Was this before or after? Uh, okay, this was after. This was way after uh, Back to the Future. It was 98. Wow. Probably around the time of Spin City. All right. So up next we have uh, a movie with uh, Kirk Douglas. I've... I think it's a yeah. I think it's a western of some sort, but um, you know, never really found any more of these. Never even heard of this series. But from uh, all I know is that it's from Universal. And so here we have Kirk Douglas in Lonely Are the Brave. Now the bra the uh, thing that they have up top here is that it's part of the Universal Backlot series, which is uh, an ongoing collection of rare gems, overlooks groundbreaking work and films, historical and cultural importance, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Music oh, music by Jerry Goldsmith. Okay, well then, uh, this, uh, might actually be pretty good. Let's check this out. Hmm. Do let me a good Western if the story's right, you know? All right, so up next we have, a uh, movie to add to my Cinema Classics collection. Um, now, I've got a couple movies in this series already, but um, this one here is basically, this was huge when it came out, especially in the, in the uh, uh, early, early 50s. Uh, so here we have the first ever film that was shot in CinemaScope. And what CinemaScope is, is uh, basically it's, um, literally, it's widescreen, but it's like the widest screen possible that you could probably ever see. Um because there are certain theaters, like, for example, in, uh, like, Cinerama, 
where the picture looks like it's kind of curved a little bit, but the whole f screen is used up. Uh, so here we have, uh, starring Richard Burton and Gene Simmons in The Robe, which is basically a movie about, um, about Marcellus Gallo, a Roman centurion charged with overseeing the crucifixion, but when he wins Christ's robe in a gambling game at the foot of the cross, his life changed forever. So basically it sounds like it's kind of a historic, it's a, it's a biblical epic. So that sounds kind of interesting. Uh, you know, you know, the fact, you know, cause you got the Romans and all that stuff and everything, but, uh, yeah, definitely a movie, uh, to shoot, you know, in definite widescreen and, uh, you know, there we go. All right, so up next, uh, we have, well, since Adam Zaylor's kind of made a bit of a comeback lately, um, surprisingly, I didn't have this movie. I've heard of great things about it, but I've never actually seen it all the way through. Um, uh, probably one of his first very early dr uh, dramatic movies, and I used to have this a while ago, but I sold it because I never could find it with the slipcover, and I finally found it with the slipcover. It's about time. <laughs> Good grief. Anyways, uh, so here we have uh, from Paul Thomas Anderson, who's known loads of great movies. Um, we have the two-disc special edition of Punch Drunk Love. Now, I know uh, Criterion just did a release of this. I'm hoping I can get that edition to kind of see what the differences differences are and stuff. And, um, yeah, what can we say? Uh, it, this movie just looks awesome. I mean, from what I remember, it, it's pretty good. Kind of a more serious role for Sandler. All right, so then up next we have a movie starring uh, Mickey Rourke and Anthony Hopkins. I've only heard of it. It sounded interesting, but uh, the director who did this was Michael Sabino, who's known for doing uh, The Deer Hunter and also Heaven's Gate. Uh, we have uh, Desperate Hours. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, then up next, we have ourselves a racing movie. This one, I have been trying to hunt this thing down forever. And um, I don't know why. This one's always hard to find, especially with this original DVD release. Um, I think I found it on Blu-ray a while ago. But I've been trying to hunt down the original DVD release. And I found it for one measly little dollar. We have Steve McQueen in La Mans, or La Man, however you want to call it. Uh, but yeah, great racing movie, though. Uh, then up next, we have, well, an Academy Award winning film. Uh, you know, definitely out there. One that I have only heard about but never seen, but I know it's really, really good. Uh, you know, nominated for seven Oscars. And um, what can we say? It's got Dustin Hoffman in it. It's a two-disc set. We have the 40th anniversary edition of The Graduate. Now, what's cool about this is that not only does it have the movie, but it actually also does have a CD sample of songs uh, that were written, of course, by uh, Simon and Garfunkel. Of course, we got, uh, you know, probably one of the best songs ever made. We have The Sound of Silence. Uh, and there's Mrs. Robinson, uh, Scarborough Fair, and uh, Cantle. April comes, she will. So, but yeah, the sound of silence. Um, for those of you who are newer and have no idea what that song is, you're probably familiar with the disturbed uh, version of that song, where basically that's it's a remake or kind of a kind of like a different version of it, which is awesome. Anyways, all right, so now down to the last two movies. Yeah. All right, so up next, we have a movie from um, Nick Nolte and Robert Shaw. Uh, fun underwater adventure. We have The Deep, which um, I it looks kind of somewhat like The Abyss meets Jaws a little bit, I guess. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, we'll give it a shot. And finally, uh, we have a movie from Roman Polanski, which I've never seen it just sounded interesting. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, here we have uh, The Tenant. Sounded interesting. I'm like, yeah, for a dollar, why not? Because <laughs> mainly the spine is what attracted me to it. I'm like, huh, that sounds kind of 
bug-like or interesting, but yeah, it's kind of hoping to find a lot more sci-fi stuff today, but so I'm like, eh, I'll take what I can find, especially if it's only a dollar, you know, I'll grab it. Alrighty, well, that's quite a lot of stuff, <laughs> so... Alrighty, with that, you guys, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification button. Um, you know, stay safe out there this coming weekend. Um, I'm hoping maybe to do a video and showing off my uncle in law's DVD collection. Um, he doesn't have nowhere near as much as I do, as you can probably tell from behind me. Um, you know, but uh, he's got some interesting things in his collection, which I, of course, you know, don't have, but, uh, he's more, he's more nitpicky about certain things than me. Um, so yeah, possibly maybe be on the lookout for that, and, um, uh, definitely be on the lookout for, uh, some, a very few non-movie related, you know, Eclipse videos, but, you know, what can I say? Um, you know, this is only gonna happen once in our lifetime, you know, as far as I know. And uh, so with that, you guys, uh, take care, like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and with that, I'll see you next time.